The Old Testament is largely based on the Hebrew Bible, which is a collection of writings by ancient Israelites. The Hebrew Bible has origins in the ancient religion of Judaism. The exact beginnings of the Jewish religion are unknown, but the first known mention of Israel is an Egyptian inscription from the 13th century BC. Because the books in the Old Testament are all ancient texts, it is very difficult to determine the exact date they were written or incorporated. The Hebrew Bible includes only the books known to Christians as the Old Testament. The Hebrew canon has three divisions, the Torah, or Law, the Nea'im, or Prophets, and the Ketuvim, or Writings. The Protestant and Roman Catholic arrangements nearly match one another. Following conquest by Alexander the Great, the Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek in the 3rd century before Christ. The Greek translation of Holy Bible was known as the Septuagint. This Greek translation was initiated at the request of King Ptolemy of Egypt to be included in the Library of Alexandria. The Septuagint was the version of the Bible used by early Christians in Rome. The Septuagint was presumably made for the Jewish community in Egypt when Greek was the common language throughout the region. The Old Testament of Roman Catholics was based on books of Septuagint that comprises 46 books and most of the Protestant churches has 39 books, remaining 7 books are included in apocryphal books. These extra books are ultimately derived from the earlier Greek Septuagint collection of the Hebrew scriptures and are also Jewish in origin. Some are also contained in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Old Testament contains the creation of the universe, the history of the patriarchs, the exodus from Egypt, the formation of Israel as a nation, the subsequent decline and fall of the nation, the prophets, and the wisdom books. The Old Testament can be subdivided into five broad segments. These are grouped according to theme, author, and historical context. These five categories are as follows. 1. The Pentateuch or Torah. 2. The historical books. 3. The wisdom and poetry books. 4. The major prophets. 5. The twelve minor prophets. Now let us first discuss the first section of the Old Testament commonly known as, the Pentateuch or Torah. The Hebrew word for law, or Torah, means guidance or instruction, and that includes stories offering everyday examples of how people were meant to live, as well as legal requirements. These books were later called the Pentateuch, and tradition attributed them to Prophet Moses. The books of the Pentateuch or Torah are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Prophet Moses is believed to be the author of these books, although opinion and research differ on this subject. Now let's the second category, which is, the historical books. There are twelve books in this part of the Old Testament namely Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. These books were composed at different times and places but have been arranged in a sequence that tells the story of God's people from the occupation of Canaan through the rise and fall of the northern and southern kingdoms, and the return and rebuilding of Jerusalem in the Persian period. These books cover the life of the nation from their possession of the land down to the two deportations and loss of the land because of unbelief and disobedience. Covering about 800 years of Israel's history, these twelve books tell about the conquering and possession of Canaan, the reigns of the judges, the establishment of kings, the division of Israel into the northern and southern kingdoms, the fall of the northern kingdom to Assyria, the exile of the southern kingdom into Babylon, and the return to Jerusalem under the leadership of men like Nehemiah and Ezra. Now let's discuss the third category of books in the Old Testament. Although complete Holy Bible is full of wisdom but especially six books in the Christian Bible are commonly referred as, the books of wisdom and poetry. These books are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, 
Song of Songs, and Lamentations. These books are almost entirely made up of poems, songs, and wise sayings that the ancient Jews and later the Christians followed in their daily and spiritual life. These books invite the reader to participate in God's wisdom by bringing justice, mercy, and insight to the world around us. Wisdom literature also laid emphasis on understanding and attaining wisdom for all areas of life, including our relationships with God and with one another. The fourth category of the books of Old Testament tells us about the life and events related with major prophets. Both major and minor prophets of the Old Testament played significant and major roles in establishing the Kingdom of God. The books in this classification are categorized major prophets because of the length of the books, the long ministry, and great influence of these prophets. The term major refers only to their length of writings, in distinction to the twelve minor prophets, whose books are much shorter and grouped together as a single book in the Hebrew Bible. The five books of the major prophets namely Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel cover a significant time span and present a wide array of messages. The name, Minor Prophets, goes back apparently to Saint Augustine, who distinguished the twelve shorter prophetic books as prophetae minors from the four longer books of the prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. The twelve books of the minor prophets together do not equal in length the book of Isaiah. The Hebrew Bible contains the books of twelve minor prophets, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. In most other versions of the Old Testament, each of these twelve is treated as a separate book, but in the Hebrew Bible they are consolidated into one book that is the last of eight books in the second division of the Hebrew Bible, known as Nehaim or the Prophets. In the Hebrew Bible, these works were counted as one anthology. The works are commonly studied together, and are consistently ordered in Jewish, Protestant, and Catholic Bibles. To conclude we can say that the purpose of this section was to introduce and explain various major sections of the Old Testament. With this background information one can understand what all is there in the Old Testament and what to expect while reading these sections.